Welcome back everyone to another reaction video. Well, it's been some time since I have done a reaction to a Sabaton song and there are a few that I still need to get to, especially from the latest album, some fantastic songs. Uh, but this one in particular, um, it's a cover of a song by Motorhead. And if you know anything about me at all, you know I have a real affinity for the men who fought and died in the Great War, in World War I. That's why so many of my videos from Europe have focused on their stories because I feel just really just a place in my heart that I can't really explain for what those men on both sides experienced. Uh, in particular, my visit to the Somme was as powerful an experience as I've ever had uh, anywhere on a battlefield in my life and I'm going back there in just a few weeks with my daughter. So we're going to take a look at the song 1916 today. Uh, I have not watched the video for this song. I've heard the song. I've listened to it quite a few times and it's uh, it's powerful. Uh, powerful in capturing the utter waste of young men's lives that the World War was all about. And in particular I believe this song is about the psalm. So we're going to watch it, and every so often I'll just kind of stop and make some observations, but uh, experiencing the music video for the first time. The link is in the description if you want to see it without my commentary. Here's okay, the band. Psalm and live, uh, live in concert, they're fantastic. Just, I mean, already right off the bat, that's such an incredible set of lyrics. God on my side and a gun in my hand, chasing my days down to zero. Technically, you had to be 19 to serve on the front lines in the British uh, Imperial Forces, but there were thousands who weren't. I visited the grave of Horace Isles, who was 16 years old, who died on the first day of the Battle of the Somme, July 1st, 1916, when I was in Ypres. A few months ago, I visited the grave of Valentine Strudwick, who was 15, when he was killed. Just kids. Kids. And I marched, and I fought, and I bled, and I died, and I never did get any older. But I knew at the time that a year in the line was a long enough life for a soldier. So they're showing soldiers from different wars. I like it. American flag, French flag. We all wanted and we wrote down our names and we added two years to our ages. Glad about their age. Thirst for the Hun, we were food for the gun. Now, one of the things I really like here is that, you say, for example, you see right there an American soldier, but not with um, some of these American soldiers. They're showing them without the traditional American helmets because a lot of these black soldiers, like guys in the Harlem Hellfighters, had French guns, French helmets, uh, served in the French army. But you see guys from all different backgrounds, from different wars, and uh, so even though the song's about 1916, it's about a specific battle, they're recognizing that there's that common thread through all of war, the waste of life, the, the loss of innocence, the, uh, the death of people with their whole lives ahead of them, very often teenagers. Roman soldiers. World War II. These 
in Swedish uniform. So young. There's a Motorhead flag. So like I said at the beginning, this is originally a song by Motorhead. And I went and I had never heard the song before. So I listened to Motorhead's version yesterday. And it's much much more stripped down. It's more of a almost like an acoustic feel with just like some strings in the background and stuff. And it's, uh, it's very powerful, but in a different way. Are those the guys from the actual band Motorhead? That's what I'm guessing. I, I, I'm not familiar enough with the band to know that. So he says, the day's not half over and 10,000 slain. The first day of the Battle of the Somme, July 1st, 1916, 19,000 British soldiers die. So half of it, you know, be, be around 10,000. A lot of these guys died in a matter of minutes. And at the very end, I'll throw up the link to my series from the Psalm, my six videos that I did there, um, just telling some of those stories from July 1st. It's just absurd what those men were asked to do and how quickly and how short a uh, stretch of ground they covered before they died. It's just what they were asked to do was impossible. And now there's nobody remembers our name. That last line they say, and they say, and now there's nobody remembers my name. More often than not, these men ended up in unknown graves because they died out in no man's land, and these battles sometimes lasted for months, and nobody could get to them to recover them to identify them. Later on in the war, they have dog tags, but it doesn't always matter. And uh, it's one of the saddest parts of this war is going to all of these places like the Menin Gate or Thiepval. And seeing just the tens of thousands of names of men whose bodies were never identified. And as a, as a family, it's, it's hard enough to lose your child, your 15, 16, 17-year-old kid, or even a 40-year-old husband and a father. But even more so to know that you have no idea where they ended up. Uh, that's one of the reasons why you have the unknown warrior at Westminster Abbey, the unknown soldier Arlington National Cemetery or at the Arc de Triomphe in France and these places is it gives these families somewhere to go to remember. And I would like to think that we do remember these guys' names because they, they deserve to be remembered. Oh, that's such a sad song. First July 1916, British volunteers with no battlefield experience ran into a hailstorm of machine gun fire and artillery at the at the Somme. These POWs battalions, entire towns, kids just wiped out. They were friends, neighbors, relatives, and workmates from mostly northern communities enlisted with the promise to be able to fight alongside one another. Guys like Accrington. Accrington. 57,000 miles. There are casualties to gain three miles. A man killed every 4.4 seconds. <laughs> 19,000 Englishmen killed before noon. A whole generation destroyed in three hours. Entire towns in northern Lancashire and South Yorkshire had a whole generation of men completely wiped out. Yeah, guys like the Accrington Pals, the Sheffield Pals. <sighs> 
can't make sense of it. I just can't make sense of it at all. Ugh. That was good. That was really, really good. Um, fantastic song written by Motorhead. The cover by Sabaton's phenomenal. Um, I saw last night a somebody uploaded a video from, um, I want to say Sabaton did a concert in Leeds, which would be in one of these areas, and they had this lone drummer in a British World War One uniform playing uh, as they sang it. It was so good, so very good. Um, but I'll throw up the link to my videos from the psalm so you can learn a little bit more of these guys' stories if you want to check that out. Thanks for watching.